Hey, face. Oh, it's not on you. Hey, Facebook oh. friends. This is amazing time to. I finally get to interview Eric for my new series. And I haven't even announced this yet, but I was so excited to have Eric as the first interview on Worthy Women Wednesday. And so, yes, you might be asking, like, well, he's not a woman. Why are you interviewing him? He has actually been one of the biggest supporters in my healing journey and watching me grow after the last five years. And I've had a lot of women come to me and ask me about how did I find someone who was so supportive and how did I find someone who, yeah, is for one so amazing and good looking and um, it's like just fun to be around. But also, how did I find someone who has the hard conversations with me, who allows me to be vulnerable and is vulnerable back with me? And so I want to interview Eric today in the purpose of just supporting you guys to realize that you do get to have healthy, abundant, exciting, fun relationships. Woo! After, yes, in general and especially after abuse. Because as you guys know, I'm a health, I'm a health coach and I'm an abuse coach. And what that means is, is that I help women who've gone through abuse let go of their past by really releasing it and then reclaiming their life and rising up and creating the life of their dreams. And so Eric has supported me throughout that time and it's been amazing having someone by my side. And that is also possible for you too. Because after going from abuse, I remember thinking that I would never find a relationship and I didn't want to get vulnerable with anyone and I didn't want to let anyone close to me. And so, um, yeah. so. Without further ado, Sounds I'm going to be great. interviewing Eric here, and he just wants you guys to know that this is his first Facebook Live. It is. And he's like, why are we live. going live? Why do we have to do this live? I'm but, very nervous, but we're going to do this. We're going we're gonna to make it happen. I'm super excited to be here. I know. I just wanted to be as vulnerable and open with you guys as possible because I we want to serve you guys right now. We want to show up and be vulnerable and honest in what has worked for our relationship. We are not perfect, but we have done a lot of things over the years to show up for each other and so yes and we are also getting married um don't have the dates yet so that's gonna be really exciting but that's the next step in our relationship we probably and have these talks like every couple nights but, i know and it's now it's live though so it's a little it's a little different i know he was like <laughs> make sure i know all the questions and, and go over them with me and i was like hey like we have these conversations every night so we want that just to be we want this to be really casual and have a conversation like we grabbed a glass of wine and had cheese and crackers um, because we want you guys just to know that we're not perfect and we're not coming on here trying to be this perfect re um, relationship, but we do take the time to actually go through these questions that we're about to interview Eric on. So, yes, um, thank you for doing this. Yes, of course. Okay, so first of all, um, this is my amazing fiance, Eric Broshart, and I want him to tell you guys a little bit about himself. Okay, so um, I'm an Arizona native. I grew up in Arizona. I have a younger brother. I played baseball my whole life. Um, sports was a big thing. I now sell real estate in Scottsdale and all over the Metro Phoenix area. And I met this girl five years ago, which was awesome, by yeah. mistake, by the way, which was cool. Yeah. Um, Okay, fine, just share like a little bit about how we met. Uh, we met on a blind date through a friend of mine and we kind of were set up with our different friends. And it, so it was like out. a double date double and we date, were set up with we the opposite, opposite people. I brought people. a friend for him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what else about me? That's, that's pretty much it. I mean, real estate agent, uh, live in Arizona, born and raised. So so much Sports. more about There's this There's a lot guy. more, but I, yeah, I'm drawing blanks. <laughs> yeah, so that's who he, he is. Um, I, what do you love about yourself the most? I love most about myself that I have the grit and determination of a bulldog that no one can stop. <laughs> I think that is the biggest yes. thing about myself that um, is my biggest strength and something that I love most about myself because it's taken me um, you know, far in my, in my career. It's taken me far in sports. It's taken me far in my relationship, and yeah. it takes work, right? It takes, yes. it takes a lot of determination, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of time and energy, but I have that determination to win and succeed. Yes, guys, he's known for Mr. Whatever It Takes agent, um, <laughs> and Mr. Whatever It Takes 
Uh, everything. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah. The ring, like he picked out himself, like all these things, like he's Mr. Whatever it takes. And so, um, I love that he's taken that for our relationship as well, but he's just an amazing person. So get to know him as well. You're going to be seeing more of him. He's not going to get away from these lives anymore. <laughs> so, um, what's your favorite thing about me? Your favorite thing about, my favorite thing about you is that you're very opposite from, like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm selfless, but you are probably the most selfless person I've ever met. Now, when I met Alicia, I was just starting in real estate. I had been in a call center for a few years trying to, like, just meet, like, the minimum requirements to, like, get through the day. <laughs> and um, yeah. watching Alicia grow with me has been really cool, but... The thing I love most about Alicia is that she always puts someone else before herself, which has been a really good thing for you, but it's also been, we're going to get to this later, but it's also been kind of a negative thing for you for a yes. long time too when we first met. Um, yes. But yeah, that's probably the most thing that I love the most about you is that you are a very caring person. Too bad he's not interviewing me because I would say a million things I love about him. Well, that's just one um, thing, but that's like yeah. the first thing. So um, I, we want to go into the story of me telling Eric about my abuse, um, but first I want to just really preface, like, we had been dating maybe for about three months, four, no, four to five months actually, and before that I had really not really talked about my abuse with anybody. And so just like, uh, uh, before that happened, I was not vulnerable at all with you, right? I think, she was the um, yeah. non-emotional girl. So I had a, I was living in an apartment with two of my close, close friends still to this day, and we knew Alicia as the emotionless girl because she yeah. was, she never cried, she never talked at dinner with us about anything important, she yeah. never showed any feelings. Whenever we had any like disagreements, it was like, no, no talk. Let's yeah. just, let's just let's just ignore the. Like the invulnerable, uncomfortable yes. conversations. Yes. Yeah. So isn't that crazy, yeah. guys, hearing that from, like, those of you who know me now, of how open I am and honest. Um, so I want you guys to know that, like, if you feel like that you can't be open and honest and you feel like you need to have so many relationships, so many friendships, so that they not one of them is actually deep and close to you, I know how that feels. And so that's why I wanted to preface it with that. Like, I wasn't someone who just opened up my heart to anybody. And so Eric really, um, I don't even know if you really noticed this, I was thinking about this question earlier. Um, the reason why I felt so comfortable, honestly, with sharing with Eric is because he had a lot of things that I didn't necessarily have. And one of those things was his relationship with his mom. And oh, he had, he, uh, he told me. Mom. Yes, an amazing mom. I know you're probably mom. watching this too. Yes. Mom. So his relationship with his mom was something that I was like, he was like, yeah, every Sunday I go over to my mom's house for dinner. And I was like, every Sunday? I was like, oh, every Sunday. too much, right? To but, this day. But I, to this day. But what I realized is, like, this is a man who, who values people close to him. And also, like, knowing that he had that relation with his mom was something that I always desired to have, um, that necessarily didn't have growing up. And so I really felt, like, open to him right away when he invited me to go to that Sunday dinner. And it took a while. It took a while. But... <laughs> Um, so that was one of the things that really helped me start feeling comfortable and really like realizing that he was a safe person for me to tell. And ultimately like why I decided that was is because he had that relationship with his mom. And I, I don't think I really realized that until I asked that question a while ago, like how did I tell Eric this? Um, so enough about me, you guys hear from me all the time, but I wanted you guys to know like where I was at before this all happened. So do you remember the first time that I shared my story of going through abuse from 11 to 13 as a child. Yeah, <clears throat> so we were talking off air about this. I don't remember exactly where we were, but I do yeah. remember, I still have these feelings now, but I still, I do remember exactly how I felt. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I still remember exactly how I felt, yeah. and that was a very hard, and it still is a very hard um, thing that I feel, you know, now, even knowing, so, but yeah. yeah. I remember how, you told me. I don't remember where we were though. Do you? Yeah. I, I, it was, it was, I was after a, probably a not very emotional, oh yes, this is what it was. Um, you were asking me about my family actually, because he was very close to his family and then he's like, well, why aren't you close to your family? That makes sense. Yep. Why aren't you, why don't you talk about some family members? 
Um, and that's when we started, and I was like, well, we're just not that close, and I, and I didn't want to share the story, and, and he kept on asking questions like, well, what about this person, what about this person? And then I eventually was like, okay, well, I have to tell you something. Because at that point, I was like, it's not fair for him to know, like, have this amazing relationship with his family and for me not to even be willing to talk about my family. So that was the first time, yeah. um, actually. And then, and then, like, just just go in, like, what were the emotions you felt? And, and what did you um, yeah, want to do? Well, it was um, obviously very ang anger. I mean, at the time that we were dating at that point, um, and this is one of the biggest things you ask, you're going to ask me what I've learned and how we've grown together. Yeah. Anger has yeah. been one of the biggest things that I've really yeah. focused on over the years, especially in the yeah. last like three, three years. I mean, we've been dating for five, but the first, yeah. the first two, I remember anger was a big issue with, with our relationship with me, especially. Um, but obviously yeah. that day anger was a big thing that went through my whole body. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, being sad, but more so, you know, just rage and anger was really my yeah. sh sheer uh, emotion that day when you told me that. Which is rightfully so, and and I think my response was just like, I understand that you're angry, but I'm okay, I'm fine. I, no, it's not that big a deal. Because he was like, How are you like even alive right now? How are you even going through this? Like how, you know? And he was really worried about me and really angry, right? Mm -hmm. And I then again tried to put on a mask that I was actually okay. And again, I thought about Eric and I was like, oh no, I don't want you to be upset. I don't want you to be angry. Like this is not- Caring about someone else prior yes. to her. So yeah, exactly. Which brings us to next question. Yeah, so I, yeah, I automatically like downplayed how I um, felt about the abuse and everything and went straight for supporting someone else. So yeah, what's your next question? Probably. What were your thoughts? We already asked that. Um, was I the first person that you told, um, had heard that had been through abuse? Yeah. Yeah. No one, yeah. no one ever talks about that. Like no one ever, no one ever, and I've, I mean, I'm a social guy, but I've never had anybody tell me yeah. anything like that before. So yeah, not only was I like someone really close to him, but I was actually the first person that you had ever heard had gone through abuse. And, and, and which is, that's crazy. Right? Because yeah, well, you know a lot of like people. It now, I mean, yeah, looking now, back, it's like. Well, watching you is like, I mean, you you are so in that space where you're you're talking to so many people that have gone through something like that. I just, I feel like most people looking in from the outside don't they don't have the understanding. Like they just don't get it, yeah. and it's probably because we like in yeah. society we just don't talk about it that much. But yeah. having sat here with you and watched you and seen you do all the things that you've done over the last you know year and a half it's yeah. pretty amazing yes and that's exactly why i want to have this conversation is because you don't talk about it and, and we don't talk about it enough we don't feel like we can talk to our spouses about it we don't feel like we can talk to our friends family whatever about it because um yeah 84 percent of people aren't believed the first time and so what happens is we shut down and that's exactly what i did so yes um so let's let's fast forward a little bit. I guess probably maybe two years down the road, mm -hmm. when maybe I was a year working. And a, yeah, about a year and a half. Yeah, when you said enough is enough. I'm telling about this that part I remember vividly because I remember being at home. We were living at the condo. Mm -hmm. We were in a condo that was about a thousand square feet. Maybe actually it was like seven hundred square feet. Small little space, <laughs> right? Like a, really small. Like our bedroom size now, right? Yeah. And. Um, we, we had a dog and we and I was working full time again. This was like right when I started in real estate. So I had borrowed money from my mom. Like this is like way before anything, right? Before I had any sold anything. <laughs> and Alicia was working day and night and going to school, trying to be a bartender and then go at night, like five days or four days a week to go to Street Life, which is a, can you tell them just real quick? A street light with a home for girls who've gone through sex trafficking. So, so I was she, doing the night shift. So uh, she's working the night shift. She's working yeah. bartending. You're going to school. You're trying to have a relationship with yeah. me. And you're having to try to make some time for fun too. So yeah. it was like impossible. And I remember sitting there one night where you came home. And Alicia would come home at like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the evening. 
like in the morning, right? And I would be sleeping and I'd wake up and I'd say hi and we'd go back to bed and then we'd wake up the next morning and Alicia would complain for like the first 30 minutes of the day, like every day. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd yeah. be like trying to start my day with like positivity because I'm doing sales and I'm trying to get like in the mood of like, okay, I got to sell something. I got to be positive. I got to get moving and jazzed and feeling good. And yeah. Alicia would bring me down. She would complain. She would go back to bed and then I'd go off to work and then I'd come home and I wouldn't see her until literally you know, like one o'clock in the morning. And this yeah. went on for like two years, like a year, at least yeah. a year, at least a year. Yeah. I mean, at it least. went on for a long time, way too yes. long. And I said yes. to Alicia after probably eight months of this happening, so yeah. it, it happened for about a year. And mm -hmm. after like eight or nine months, I said, dude, you're like going a mile a minute and you're not giving yourself any time at all, like zero time. You don't work out. You don't write your goals, you don't go and do things for yourself and, and you're you're so helpful to everybody, yeah. but you're not helping yourself. And I'm like, how can you possibly help these girls at the level that you want to help them at if yeah. you don't help yourself? Yes. And I think that day Alicia was like, I think a bulb went off. Oh, yeah. I remember because we still talk about we talk about it all the time. But a bulb went off that day and you were like Yeah. You're like yeah. yeah. I, I did. I think. I think before the ball came out, I was. Pissed. Well, she was mad. First. I was like, how? She was like, how dare you say beat, that I beat, need beat help you. and I haven't worked yeah. on myself? Right. Because at that point, I was like, I'm fine. I'm good. I don't need help. I'm. I'm great. Rock star. But, yes. Tough guy. Yeah. Tough. Tough, yeah, tough, tough guy. Tough, tough girl. Tough girl. Yeah. Yeah. But so at that point, I hadn't actually taken the time to work on myself, and so it was very obvious to Eric that. No matter how much I loved these girls who I'd worked through sex trafficking with, um, I wasn't showing up for myself. So it was exhausting serving people all the time and not showing up for myself in those things. And so that it was, was hard to watch. Probably too. the best moment of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah, was one of, them. <laughs> one of them. One of them. Yeah, one of them. I don't know what the other one was, but um, yeah. So so that was an amazing time that he stood up for me and he t took a stand for me and our relationship and said that that's not how it's gonna be anymore. So. Felt, felt good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've taken a few stands for you here and there. You've taken some stands, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, So the next question is, so by the way guys, these are questions that I actually have had throughout the week, um, asking people about this interview and seeing what they wanted to hear. Um, some of my coaching girls that I've coached with over the, over the time they've asked questions about relationships and all this, so these are all these questions from you guys. So if you guys have more, um, we maybe can answer some more in the comments. Yeah, I right. see that you guys are commenting. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Um, so, how did you remain supportive throughout our relationship of my healing and of me growing? How did you remain supportive? Not, like, not that one conversation, but how did you continue to do this? So, one of my strategies especially early with you was to try to bring you around more like-minded individuals that I hung out with and I've been pretty fortunate um, to hang around some pretty awesome people yeah. that are way smarter than me and the biggest thing that I've learned is you know getting rooms with people that are smarter and farther along the process than you are and learn from them and get better and learn from their mistakes so that you don't have to go out and make the same mistakes they did. Yeah. And I've been pretty I've been pretty good about trying to do that on a consistent basis. And I think one of the things that we did together, which I think really like skyrocketed my my stuff, but yours too, was we did a which we did what's called a life plan. And for those of you that, that don't know what that is, essentially we we like went out and we took time for ourselves for a full 24 hours. And no we, phones, no, no, like phones, no woods, nothing. cabin, no dogs, no yeah. kids, whatever zero, you have. Zero distractions, yeah. right? Yeah, zero distractions. And we put down on paper what was most important to us in our lives. Yeah. And I said to Alicia, I said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do, we're going to write down everything that's important to us, all of the major things. So any, um, anything that you can think of is called yeah. an account. And we're going to go and write out all of our accounts, what's important to us how we're gonna get better at it, where we're currently at, what our commitments are around these things, and we're gonna like look at it every day. <laughs> and yeah. we're gonna like really become obsessed with 
um, just that and our plan. Yeah. And like, I think the biggest thing that Alicia's done so well, especially with her business and helping all of you is she's given you guys and she's certainly done for herself. She's put a plan in place for her, for her work and for helping, you know, you guys, which has been really, really cool to watch yeah. because it's been such like an important thing for us with our, our, yes. our plan. Yes. Yes. I love that because I talk about this all the time is that yes like you've gone through painful life experiences you've gone through abuse but really and, and maybe you've talked to a counselor and, and, and found some healing that way but for me I had talked to a counselor and I was like I'm done talking like I don't want to just talk about my past I want to actually know how to live my life and to have not just an okay life but to have an abundant, to have an exciting, to have like, oh, amazing relationship. Big time. You know, and so like that that's what that life plan did. And that's why like I, I've stressed having a routine in life because we, we can want to have these things. We can want to have an amazing relationship. We can want to have, um, you know, healing and freedom from abuse. But if we don't take action and if we don't have accountability to go for our goals and to go for um, our healing journey, then oftentimes it doesn't happen. And it, what is that like? It's like a, a goal without a, what is it? Quote? Just consistency, right? Consistency. Like she's talking about yes. consistency. And that's yes. one of the things like we, I, so the other thing that I, I thought of when you asked me that question was our Sunday meetings. And I yeah. think that's been yeah. a, one of the bigger things outside of our life plan that we try to do daily yeah. is our Sunday meetings. And our Sunday meetings consist of us typically drinking some wine and having dinner, yes, <laughs> which we love doing that. Yeah. But yeah. having those conversations around what our life plan is, what we're coming up with next week, how what went well it, last week, what didn't go what well, didn't like, go well how, more how more. are we personally doing? Like we can get really into talking about our companies because he has a company for real estate and I have my own company for coaching women who've gone through abuse. And so mm -hmm. we can get really into talking about that and we don't do this perfectly. Yes. We talk about, business and stuff a lot but we also like check in like how are you personally doing yeah. and 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 like how many times did you work out this week yeah well it's monday so one and we it's did one we for got one. One. Hey, one, for one for one, one. <laughs> so so like things like that like actually checking in on each other personally too because we get support and love in our life and and i encourage you guys to find that whether it's in a relationship or it's with a coach or with a mentor or whatever it is because that is what changed change our lives is really actually having the hard conversations or being like hey you know what I actually didn't really feel like you were there for me this week or I didn't really feel like you understood um, how hard this week was for me because I did have hard weeks like this that was, was not like thing. just a uphill like it wasn't just like it it wasn't just like a yes it was it like wasn't a mindset an overnight shift. Success. it wasn't an overnight success yeah it wasn't an overnight success it wasn't overnight healing but like you said it was consistent action every single day um, from the two of us that really helped our relationship, helped me heal from abuse, helped you become a I think you undersell it, like with the the under overnight success. Like it wasn't an overnight success no. with your business, it wasn't yeah. an overnight success with our relationship, it wasn't an overnight success yeah. with our finances. Oh yeah. It wasn't an overnight success oh, with yeah. our our um, working out and yeah. our no drinking, like yeah. all that stuff. Like it takes time and effort and energy and it takes yeah. hard work and consistency. Like that's yeah. the thing I think that the Sunday meeting does the best for us is that we get to talk about yeah. it every single week and we get to hold each other accountable to those yeah. things that are important to us. And let's just be real. There was probably a really dark year in our in our relationship mm -hmm. where we weren't keeping each other accountable to those things. Um, after after we had had that conversation of let's do better, let's let's work on ourselves, let's mm -hmm. Um, you know, things came up and, and life is not always easy and, you know, you get into some things and you can share what you want to share, but, um, yeah, I want, I want to share with you guys, like, we're not coming on here like it was like roses after we, like, Eric, you know, had that conversation with me. No, it was really yeah, hard. It was really hard. It was. And, you know, like, we even broke up for two months and worked on ourselves separately mm -hmm. and realized that ultimately, like, we were better together. And so it was really important for us to take that time to realize that, like, hey, yes, we can do this on our own and yes absolutely you can do this on your own but if you desire a relationship then you get to say it out loud you get to proclaim it and you get to have an amazing healthy relationship tell them what you said about uh getting engaged what happened what's the story Which part? well you had a coaching call and someone, oh, said, someone yes. said to you you're not engaged and you wanted to be engaged and no 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 okay tell, okay tell, let tell me tell happened. you this, this is a good long story short was <laughs> I was on a coaching, pro so I have a coaching program for women, and there was about six women on the call that night, 
and they're saying, I'm okay if I don't have another relationship, if I don't get married again, if I don't have that relationship. Mm -hmm. And I looked at them and I was like, but are you actually okay with that? And they're like, well, no, uh, no, not really. And I was like, then you don't get to say you're okay with that. And so I had this activity. I was like, okay, we get to stand up and proclaim what we want. And so each woman stood up and said, I want to be married and have a healthy relationship with amazing kids. And so I was like, you know what, guys? I'll do it with you. I'm not married yet or engaged or anything yet, right? This was like literally a week before the engagement, which I had And I'm no sitting idea in the about. living room, and she's like screaming. Oh, yeah. I, I, we got like, into it. I was like, guys. And she's like, I'm going to be married. I'm like, yeah. what the heck? How does she? Yeah. I was literally like screaming. I was like, I was like, I stood up. Yeah. Um, actually, in the, like right where we're at right now. And I was like, I want to be married, and I want to have a healthy, abundant, exciting marriage mm -hmm. with amazing kids someday. And and I said that, and then like next, three literally days later. three days later, we go to bail, <laughs> no idea at all, and he proposed, and yeah. it was the most amazing thing. And so I got back on the call the next week, and I was like, hey guys, because they had all seen you it. Put on it Facebook. out in the universe. I put it out in the universe. I was like, hey guys, it really does work. And so, <laughs> but it is true, guys. Like you, you get to, like what you want in life. Like you get to say it out loud. You get to proclaim it because when you when when things are in the dark, when you don't talk like this. When you don't have those conversations, things fester and things get worse. They don't get better. They get worse when you don't talk about hard things. Things always got worse for us when we didn't talk. Oh, absolutely. That was the biggest problem with us early yeah. in our first part. Yeah. And again, not that we're, like, we're perfect now, like far from it, but yeah. when we first started dating, we because she was the emotionless girl, we never talked <laughs> about anything that was yeah. important and yeah. how I felt and how she felt and the problems just grew bigger and bigger, but they never actually came out because we never talked about them. Yeah. They just kind of died after we were pissed enough at each other for, you know, a number yeah. of days that yeah. we just were like, meh. Yeah, we and really that's something that, like, we realized is, like, so important in our relationship, and that's why um, I, I posted this the other day, like, I was like, date night, and our date nights are like, we have these crazy conversations about life, and they've been amazing, but I actually changed that to, like, intimacy night, because, like, it, and, and intimacy doesn't just mean sex, I always just say this, guys, because intimacy also means, like, actually You're intentionally hanging out. Yes. Intimacy, like, I never knew that until you said that. I was like, well, maybe I'm putting in people's heads. In, I think you are. <laughs> whatever. Anyways, maybe that's what I thought it was. So, um, intimacy means like actually intentionally choosing to hang out with each other, choosing mm -hmm. to have conversations. And intimacy means with your relationship. Intimacy means with friendships. Intimacy means with yourself, being intimate with yourself, taking the time, choosing to have time with yourself to work on yourself and to grow. Um, because we work to get like we're working from home like I my, my company is his we're working from home we see each other a lot but we don't actually you know like choose each other and even like you know before um, I think we were like after work we'd be like oh yeah let's watch a movie together and hang out and we're like that's hanging out that counts no but that does not count because we, well, we were doing it so much for yeah. a certain time I was like I, enough movies. We need, yeah. we need to have some conversation. And yeah, I think you, yeah, you pointed <laughs> out too. You're like, Alicia, like, I know you love your business. Movies, and I, like I love, every night for three weeks. <laughs> it's because I was like all, all into like you know my company, and and that's what's made. This was in the midst of like the hardcore quarantine time, where, yeah. where no one left their house for like any reason at all. Yeah. We were just watching movies every night. Yeah. So, <laughs> but no time. Gotta change that. Which, watching which billions, yeah. which was not a movie, very important show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but good. Okay, we got a little off track, but that was amazing. I love. Having conversations with you so um okay so how did you see me change over the last few years um the biggest thing i've noticed with you alicia is your your confidence level and i think that's all come back to a number of things yeah. i mean i think that starts with our relationship too um to be honest yeah. but i think the fact that we've been on such a good trajectory for like the last three years um that's helped your confidence, but also with your business and also with the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you speak and the way yeah. that you talk to people. Yeah. Th this girl used to mumble a lot. <laughs> and so yeah. she it's something that she's really, really worked on. And I know she's probably like pounding me in the chest right now on the side because I'm not supposed no. to tell her secrets. But, nope, um, I don't care. I think like, everyone knows all She used I... to mumble a little bit, yes. but... but as you guys watch her now on these lives and on her um, all of her posts, she you would never have known this because she's such a yeah. she speaks with such confidence and such clarity and such profound power that she believes in what she's doing and it yeah. and it's 
it's such night and day though. It's yeah. really been cool to watch you do that over yeah. the years. So that's the biggest thing I've noticed with you. It is night and day because. It really is though. Um, for instance, Eric is intimidated by my t like speaking skills now. I am. He used to be the one who would always, you know, do stuff with real estate, talking to people. And then when I asked him to do this live, he was like, oh, like, why do we do it live? And Flash, like, why? Like, why? I don't want to be on an interview. Um, yeah. And gave me all these excuses until I was like, wait, honey, like, are you just like nervous? Because I was nervous. like I am a better speaker than you yeah, now. You are. And, <laughs> and yeah, and, and like you said, it takes time and it takes practice and it takes You have to build the muscle. Yeah. Which you've done. And yeah. I have not. <laughs> and you on this to. topic, but I get to. Yeah. Which yeah. is good though. Yeah. I love that. Um, yes, I have grown like crazy. And it's awesome for you to see that. So what did you think when I said I wanted to start a company for women who've gone through abuse and to share my story? So up until now, like he's like, you know, supporting me with my with my own healing. But how did you feel when I was like, hey, I actually want to share this with the world and and go Well you yeah, first like, were like doing this and like trying to improve and that was great and but then you came to me and were like hey I want to start a company about sex trafficking and how to build like confidence around growing and healing from it and I was like and the sex, I was sex not abuse yeah abuse yeah, the, yeah, like yeah. you know having you know what I mean yeah, like, yeah improving on it and healing from it I just was very nervous about it <laughs> and scared and I was honestly nervous what people were going to say, um, yeah. if I'm being truthful. Yeah. I was very nervous about what people were going to think and what people were going to say and the reactions from my friends and my family. So that was a bit nerve wracking. Um, that was my initial thoughts. But now, after watching you do it, I feel completely different about it. Yeah. yeah. And I love, I mean, like, I love your honesty because, yes, it's not easy. So for one, like, and that's like, this is what I love about you. It's not easy to hear my story and to hear like what I've gone through, but to know that I'm going to say it on a public level and I'm going to share about it day in and day in, a day, what does that say? Day in and day out. Um, and, and share my story and have, you know, your friends, your family, because I remember, um, you know, your, your mom too, like yeah, being like, oh, like my family's going to hear about that. Mm -hmm. And, and just for so long and, and to his like, um, on his side, like for so long, like it it was something that we kept secret, and I kept secret for so long. So he was like, "Oh, like you, you know, done so well keeping it a secret. Like why would you share it almost, right?" Kinda, yeah. And and so I just told him like, "This is this is not my." Remember, I told you I was like, "Believe me, this is not my ideal job. Like this is not what I thought I would yeah. be doing with my life." I was like, "But I do know that I have this calling to serve women who've gone through abuse," and I was like, "And I'm not gonna stop." Um, and so it was more like, hey, I could either be quiet about this or I could help even just one person. And yeah. that's what I was trying to say earlier, which is what I love most about you is you care so much about other people, which is so cool. Yeah. And but you were willing to put all of that in alignment versus your well, like I guess your friends or family caring about how they yeah. saw you, which was really yeah. really brave, I think. I think that's like what we've grown as like a couple too, just like realizing that like it's it's selfish to think like all about you in the sense that like if you can do something to support someone, then why would you let your insecurities about like I'm not enough, I'm not ready, I, I you know all those questions that I had for myself and, and even like in, in in doing this live like us not and Eric not getting on here would have been selfish mm -hmm. because like he does have something to bring. And, and, and comment and, and give us some like tips on what you're learning and, and how we can support you guys more. But like he does have something to say to the world and all of you guys, your stories matter and our voices matter. I think we're seeing that more than ever right now. Our voices matter. And so that's what's so amazing is that like once I, once I was confident, it's, and I think it was like once I was confident and actually being like, no, I'm not just going to um, do this as like a hobby, you know, whatever else. I was like, I'm going all in and I'm going to do whatever it takes, <laughs> whatever it takes, that's your line, whatever it takes to support women who've gone through abuse. And so when I believed in myself for it, he believed in believed in me. Mm -hmm. and, and really that's a your good tip of, for... Your level of con confidence was um, attractive and yeah. positive and yeah. created trust. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's like, that's a good side note just of like, how much your confidence also rubs off on others and helps them understand like you're like in that you enroll them in your in your story and your beliefs and your goals because 
like ultimately like yes you were the most like supportive person that I've had throughout this whole time of healing from abuse like hands down most supportive um yeah <laughs> uh, all, really kind of like I hope you know that I, I, I think yeah, you know that right I, I do but ultimately like it is my story and it is my calling and so ultimately like I don't have to um I don't have to just not do something because he like maybe like he doesn't like see the way I do or you know like it's my calling and I get to go forth and go do it mm-hmm. and like real estate oh, I tried real estate for a second um, but that's your calling and you get to go all in and do that and serve people by having them have a home that they feel safe in mm-hmm. um, and so yes and then we get to come together and also have an amazing goal and dreams together so amazing yeah um uh, how has me telling my story and being so vulnerable changed your life and inspired you? So how has my vulnerability showed you how to? Well, you were the no feeling girl, <laughs> but I wasn't so I wasn't so um, open and vulnerable and yeah. sharing with my stuff either. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I think that was part of our issues at the beginning when we first started uh, dating. So I think watching your vulnerability, especially with this business that you've built and yeah. you know the helping of, of all these um, amazing women that you've been serving it's been it's, it's made me feel the um, the need or I guess interests to be more vulnerable in my conversations with my friends and my family and my brother and my relationship with you and yeah. Yeah. my mentors and stuff like that just have just have deeper conversations I think yeah. that's been the biggest thing like instead of just talking about the game last night, like have a meaningful conversation. And that's one of the things like that, ha- it has been kind of hard for us because you always want to have these really <laughs> deep conversations, especially with my friends. Yeah. And they're not always necessarily interested in having yes. these deep conversations. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Jake. Yeah, um, and, yeah poor, poor Jake. <laughs> and Jake will watch this later and laugh. But Jake, I mean, he, he and I have really intimate conversations always, but he's, not necessarily always interested in being vulnerable with you because yeah. he doesn't yeah. feel that level of necessarily Absolutely. trusting. I mean, he does now, but yeah. at Before. the beginning, yeah. yeah. And so, just being willing to uh, be vulnerable and be like true to yourself and not necessarily care always about how other people's like don't necessarily not care about how people feel, but be you, like be true to yourself and yeah. lay the cards out, and that Stand has up been for yourself. that's been yes. what I've been so proud of. And I love seeing Eric that. grow and just like his openness and vulnerability. Um, maybe you could even speak to uh, us getting married when, yeah. Yeah, that was been vulnerable. I didn't want to do that for a long time. <laughs> Eric was his first game plan. It was like, not until I'm at least 30. And I was like, okay, because at that point I was like, yeah, that's fine. Um, and buy then, a watch for a couple, buy, buy myself a couple years. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, so what, what ultimately, like, what did you have to decide? Well, it was... It was that time, like I wanted to take our relationship to the next level, and I was excited about it, but I was also nervous yeah. about it, and yeah. you know, scared at the same time. And it's like a big step, right? Like so, yeah. that was nerve wracking. But I just think that with our relationship, with the way that we've been having these conversations and continuing to grow and doing it at a very fast level, like really doing it at a high level, but at a fast pace, yes, gave me the confidence, I guess, in terms of taking that. I that, cannot wait to hear this it. man. <laughs> um, okay, so mm, the question was, what, what did you, what have you learned from me? But I think we've kind of, kind of covered that. Yeah, we covered that. Um, how have we grown over the last five years? We've kind of covered that, guys. Well, communication. Um, yeah, communication. Communication and time. So the biggest thing with with you and I that's made us grow is our commitment to being communicated with each other on a, on a very regular basis, which yeah. we've talked about a lot on this interview, but, um, and then the second thing is time, and being conscious and aware of time, yeah. and um, I have a mentor that taught me NET, NET, is no extra time, and that really stands for, like, whatever you're gonna do, do it with the very intent purpose that you have a certain amount of time to accomplish whatever it is that you're doing, and there's no extra time to waste. And with us, like, we have some busy schedules, we have dogs, yeah. we have friends, we have our business, we have our family, we have, you know, all these things, activities, working out, like, we want to be intentional about doing and accomplishing all yeah. of those things, 
And I think the biggest thing with us to be able to accomplish all of those things in the short amount of time that we're given is really being purposeful about setting expectations with one another about what it is that's important to us. Yes. Time. It's so time. important. Yeah. Time. Time and communication. Um, so we're going to kind of wrap this up. And I always wanted to ask Eric, like, what are three tips you would give to our listeners about growing together, about talking about your painful past experiences? Um, to your significant other? Um, well, I would say two things before I share that. I think the first thing is like, you have a choice of who you're gonna be with. Like, that's a big choice. And that was, I think that was my biggest, not hesitation, but wanting to make sure I make that right decision with marrying you or getting engaged with you is that that is a massive decision because who you spend your time with is ultimately who you're going to kind of mold yeah. into or become. Like they say, you know, you you are the five people that you spend the most time with. And I mean, you and I, we spend every day, all day together, right? Like we wake up together, we walk our dogs together, we work out together, we go, like the list is very long. So yeah. like that choice of being with you and making sure that that relationship is intact and that we're doing that, like you have to make sure that that person is building you up, that person is supporting you, that person is positive. Um, so I think the biggest things would be Find someone who is positive. Find someone who is got something going on, who's busy, who is doing things um, that aren't dragging you down. Um, someone who's not bringing negative energy or drama into your life. Like that's, yeah. those things have been such, like I look back at like our business yeah. or my business. Yeah. I know you want to wrap up, but I, I think the biggest thing like that's helped me in my business especially in the last two, three years, because I think in the last two, three years, my business has blown up. Yeah. But the first two years, I was having to deal with negative energy because we were fighting, yeah. we weren't getting along, we weren't communicating the way we should be, we weren't living the lives that we knew we wanted to live, and my sales were down because I was not focused on the things that I wanted to focus yes. on. Yes. And if I, was, if I would go back two, three years from now, like three years from now, I would have focused more yeah. intensely on being so yeah. positive with yeah. my significant other that it will improve everything else that you've got going on. Yes. So my tips are be top, be positive, find someone that brings you brings you joy and doesn't bring you drama, and someone that's that you can hang out with on a regular basis that you don't rip their head off all the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> and and ultimately, like when we're talking about like specifically like sharing your story of abuse to somebody. Um, we talked about this behind the scenes and really just like giving them grace, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, yeah. and, and you know, when I first shared my story with you, like he didn't exactly know what to say and to give someone grace because like they have not gone, gone through the same things as you have. Right. So ultimately like, yes, they might not know what to say right away, but in the long run or over time, like if they're not clearly supportive or if they clearly do like say things like, I don't believe you, or why are you still talking about it? Mm -hmm. um, your story doesn't really matter. A lot of people have gone through abuse. Those are clear red flags, and I would run the opposite way. Um, but know that you are worth having a healthy, abundant, exciting, fun relationship mm -hmm. is what it comes down to. And if you don't believe that about yourself and you don't think that you are worthy of those things, we get to have a conversation. So message us, um, message me, and I would love to talk to you about how to really love yourself and to grow and to, um, I, you know, I have a course out that's called Abuse Is Not My Name and really realize that your past does not define you. And the reason why Eric, like he said, me and Eric and I are so happy and so successful, um, you know, in our lives and our businesses and all around is because we've chosen to have the hard, hard conversations, to heal from our past and to move forward and to take action every single day to show up for ourselves. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. Yeah. 100%. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything last thing that you wanted to add or anything? Um, I think just adding to that would be just like focus on yourself more than focusing on others. Like for your start, like as as you guys are growing and trying to heal from, you know, your past and and anything like like take yeah. the time, like be intentional on taking the time, like have a routine. I know we're, I know I'm like a broken record because Alicia talks about this all the time, but. But it's so true, and she's preaching it to me right now because I'm I'm out of shape and I'm not working out as much as I wish I was. And so my thing this week is, and I'm just setting small goals. Like 
you don't have to set massive, enormous goals, but like for me this week, it's just work out five days a week. No, um, no drinking Monday through Friday, which I didn't, I didn't do because I had a glass of wine tonight. But um, yeah, I consistent. said I was like, like it's your first live. How it is my first live. I needed a glass, just one though. So I'm just having one. Um, but just yeah. set like small goals, and then as you set those small goals, as you accomplish them, you can start to set bigger goals, and you can have like set your big goal. I would say set your big goal, and then go and backtrack it as small as you possibly can. Yeah. So, so would you would you guys say that Eric has a lot of good information to give to the world? Has a lot of support? comment, Mr. Wit, if you do. <laughs> yeah, seriously, this guy has supported me so much, and I keep on telling him this that he needs to go live more. He needs to share with you guys more because he has so much to share with how to have that um, next level life and how to yeah don't not just be okay but be great, be excellent. Um, and so you're going to hear more from him either on his page, so go follow him, or from Thanks, the making me hang out. Yeah, Ashley just said, yes, yeah, so good, right? Yes, he has so much information, and he gets to be in the spotlight and sharing it as well. So It was fun being here tonight. Thanks for yeah. having me, honey. Of course. I appreciate love it. Love you. Love you, too. Thanks for listening, guys. If you have any extra questions or anything, comment. We would love to hear from you guys. Bye. Bye, guys.